Kelly Olenek, uh, you're the first ever guest uh, on our brand new show, Kamloops, last week. Thanks for being with us. Let's get right into it. Um, it's Mother's Day today, and I was thinking, you probably haven't been home to see your family in a long, long time. How long has it been, and, and how much is that weighing on you that you haven't been able to come home and see, see your family? Yeah, it's been uh, almost two years. It'll be two years that kind of end of May this summer. Um, it's crazy. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. I was talking with you know, a couple friends the other day. You know, they're like, yeah, I mean, the quarantine, all that kind of stuff, you know, with the bubble and then, you know, the short off season and the borders being closed and everything that's going down is uh, you just haven't been able to. And it's it's been real tough. You know, obviously, you know, thank goodness for, you know, technology today and, you know, phones and texting and calls and FaceTime. Um, but it's definitely just not the same. And, you know, I know a lot of people, you know, felt kind of similar uh, in similar situations. So. Um, you know, I know how it feels and, you know, it would be nice to get back and hopefully this summer, you know, things clear up a little bit and we can, we can get back. Yeah. Speaking of technology, I know uh, gaming is something that you are into a little bit and that's a way that you can kind of keep in contact with some of your friends. Can't leave the house, you know, kind of stuck. Um, but, you know, it's been great. Um, you know, it's something that you know, guys do to bond all the time, you know, especially in college and then, you know, getting out of college, it's a, definitely a way to keep, you know, keep in touch. You know, when you're gaming, it's like a, you know, a two, three hour phone call, you know, with your buddies, you know, just, you know, talking smack, you know, bashing on one another, you know, catching up. Um, it's fun. You know, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's definitely a way that, uh, you know, you know, keep in touch. And um, yeah. I know one of those buddies is uh, Kamloops resident, Scott Pinio. And uh, I heard that you bought him a, a new set of golf clubs for his birthday. How important is it to you to kind of maintain those, those old relationships throughout your NBA career? Yeah, it's big. I mean, those, you know, those are your, your day one, your day one people, A1 since day one. You know, Scott, you know, been there for, you know, along my side basically since elementary school, you know, since I moved out to Kamloops. Um, you know, and it, it's, you know, those those people, you know, they're, I read something the other day that's like there's, uh, you know, there's, you know, friends for seasons, you know, friends for a reason and friends for a life, lifetime, you know, and, you know, he's a, he's a lifetime. Um you know, you have, you know, different teammates every season. You have different people that come into your life for different reasons. But those people that stay in your life, you know, for your whole lifetime. And, you know, people in Kamloops, those are the type of people that, you know, are, are lifetime people, to, you know, to me. And, you know, who have been there, you know, helped me get where I am. And, uh, you know, you always, you know, maintain those relationships. And, yeah, I ended up, you know, helping his, his girlfriend, actually, Sasha, who got him, <laughs> he wanted to get him some golf clubs. And, you know, I got into golf, especially, you know, a lot more this last year because we were in the bubble for 100 days. And uh, the only thing we were allowed to do outside of the hotel was golf. You know, they would shut down the golf course with us. So I went with Andre Iguodala almost every, you know, every chance we got. We probably golfed like 25 times. You know, he got me into it. So what are you uh, these I, days? What's your what are you scoring? Um, you know, actually, like I was pretty good. My like I, sh I shot in the 80s. Um, yeah, yeah, like I, I shot in the 80s a couple rounds. You know, that was like the best I, you know, I could ever do. But, um, you know, I definitely got way better. I'll tell you that much. So I had to, had to get, you know, Scott a, a pair of clubs so he can't, you know, have any excuses when come on there and bust his ass. Only a couple more personal life questions and we'll talk about basketball. I heard you're engaged. Um, I am. Yeah. <laughs> Who is you she and when are you getting married? <laughs> uh, what was the question? <laughs> Who is she and when are you getting married? Oh, Who is she? Her name's uh, Jackie. McNulty, she's she's from Montana. She went to school in Gonzaga. Um, beautiful girl, obviously, obviously super nice. Um, she's an accountant. Um, she lives down in Austin now, um, Austin, Texas. Um, lived there for you know, I think seven years now. Um, but yeah, she's she's you know super intelligent, super smart. Um, one of the biggest hearts you'll ever meet. Uh, you know, super giving. Has the most friends in the world that I've ever met. So. <laughs> Yeah, she we're we're engaged and she's trying to plan bachelorette parties and you no, know, she has like five planned because she has too many friends. So it's when it's are you when you guys getting hitched? Um, it'll probably be not this summer, the next one. You no, know, just hopefully to you know allow for yeah. you know people in Canada to be able to come down to the wedding. You know, I think we're gonna do it in the states and because of the borders and everything is like if we do it now, it's it kind of you know kind of puts a little hinder on on you know that whole ceremony. So. Um, we want we want it to be special, you know, for both of us, and you know, have you know all our family and friends be able to come, and you know, so hopefully in the next summer that you know, everybody, the borders and everything, will will be able to allow that. It strikes me that uh, you might need an accountant in your life 
looking at some <laughs> contracts. Uh, I think you're somewhere in the range of $60 million just through your uh, MBA contracts. What are some of the pitfalls that, that potential pitfalls that come along with, with making so much money and having that much money? <laughs> Um, uh, you know, I, I don't know if it's pitfalls. I mean, you're, you're blessed to have, you know, have money in, in any certain, you know, any, any form or, or way. I mean, I think, you know, obviously with money comes responsibility, comes a lot of, you know, you know, especially with public money, you know, it's, it's different when, you know, you know, who knows, you know, a guy like you could, could walk down the street, be making 60 million and, and no one would be the wiser. Right. I'm not um, saying that right now, but <laughs> <laughs> but 59, 59, you know, what are you, 58. Um, but you know, you know, when you're you're, you know, contracts public and you're a public figure and, and all that, um, you know, obviously, you know, people are always coming to you, you know, for asks, you know, for money, different, uh, you know, investment, different kind of things, and um, you know, you gotta be able to navigate, and negotiate all those things. Um, you know, make sure that you know you're investing in yourself first you know, making sure that you're taking care of yourself and your, your loved ones and your family and, and your friends. And, um, and then, you know, trying to help make an impact in, in any way you can. Um, but, you know, there's, there's definitely a, you know, a responsibility and um, a kind of a stigma that comes with it. And, you know, you gotta, you know, be prepared for it. Um, it's, it's not easy, but, you know, it's a blessing to have. Yeah. I mean, you've earned that money and we can, talk about basketball here I bet your career took another turn this year uh, I was just wondering what your initial thoughts were when you found about found out about the trade you went from a playoff contender to a team that was pretty much at the bottom of the standings what were your initial reactions when you found out about the trade yeah it's weird I mean um you know every time the trade deadline comes you're like oh you know something might, I could be traded I could be traded you know especially you know with me my name is kind of tossed around every once in a while you know the last kind of eight years um <laughs> But, you know, it was weird that I never felt like I was going to be traded. And I felt like, okay, maybe there's a chance. But, you know, this year I had a gut feeling I was going to be traded. And I don't know why. Um, but, you know, they say that, you know, when you have those kind of feelings, you know, a lot of times you're right. Um, so it was, it was weird. You know, we had shoot around in the morning, went home, and we had a game that night. Uh, Miami had a game that night. We were meant to play Portland. And I, I just had a feeling. Usually I eat, you know, I eat lunch, take a nap. Um, and I didn't take a nap. I was like, I have a feeling, you know, something's going to happen. And you know, I was getting a couple of text messages from my agent. They were like, you know, you're probably going to go to Toronto. Hmm. Um, you know, you guys are, Miami's the, the, you know, front runners for Kyle Lowry. Um, and if something happens, you'll, you'll probably be in the deal to Toronto. I was like, okay, okay. And that was probably at like one o'clock trade deadline is three o'clock. So two thirty comes around. You know, haven't heard anything. I get a you know phone call. It's like you guys are still in the front runners, um, and if you know if so, there's a good high possibility you're you're still going to Toronto. They're just trying to figure out terms and deal and blah blah blah. All right, three o'clock comes and passes. It's like three o one, three o two, three o three, and nothing, nothing happens. No phone calls, nothing, nothing on Twitter or no text messages. And uh, I see something that says you know Kyle Lowry's not being moved. You know, he's going to stay in Toronto this year. I was like, okay. And the, the trade deadline ends at three, right? And now it's like 305, 306. And I know that the, I think the rule is if you're on the phone with someone, so if I'm Miami and I'm on the phone with someone, like I can, as long as the phone call starts before three, you can finish the, you know, the negotiations. Yeah. So I know it's like not over, but no one's saying that negotiations are in the works to me. You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden it's like 3.15 and I get a text message from one of my good friends in Miami that was like, damn, that, that sucks, man. Good luck, you know? And I was like, what is he talking about? And, you know, I like open up, try and figure it out. And then all of a sudden the texts just start flooding in. And, um, you know, I found out I was going to Houston. And, uh, you know, it's definitely a, a weird feeling, you know, being traded. Um, you know, especially you're going from, you know, like you said, you know, we were in the finals last year. You no know, playoff contender, um, you know, to a team that's kind of just trying to figure some things out and trying to, um, you know, is you know, close to the bottom. Um, so it, it was a weird feeling. The trade turned out to be, or has turned out to be, an amazing thing for you individually. Career highs in a bunch of categories. You're seeing the floor more than ever. Why has it worked out so well for you individually? Um, you know, the trade was, you know, a blessing in disguise for me, you know, to go – you know, I kind of, it just opened a lot of doors. Um, you know, obviously in Miami, we had a great team. 
you know, who was kind of, you know, I had a you know, specific role that I was kind of feeling, you know, and here it was, it was, you know, it's a lot more open. There's a lot of freedom, you know, to, you know, to play how, you know, I've always played basketball, um, you know, and obviously it's been, you know, an up and down over here in terms of, you know, players in and out of the lineup, you know, so for me, I've had a lot more uh, responsibility on my shoulders over here, um, you know, kind of to do a little bit of everything, you know, play a lot of different positions inside, outside, handle the ball, make plays for others, you know, score, rebound. Um, so it's kind of been able to just, you know, play basketball like I, like I always have. And, uh, you know, it's been, you know, super fun, super refreshing. You know, obviously, um, you know, we haven't won as much as we'd like, but we've been in every single game uh, for the most part. We've been in a lot of games and, um, you know, made things made things tough. And, uh, you know, it's it's been great. You know, the right when I got traded, you know, Houston called me. And, um, you know, sometimes when you get traded to these teams who, you know, are kind of at the bottom, who aren't, you know, going to make a run for the playoffs or kind of, you know, are out of it, um, you know, they'll kind of just buy you out and you can go to like a playoff team and, you know, kind of whatever, you know, kind of try and, you know, make a run in the playoffs somewhere. Um, but they called me and they're like, no, no, I want you here. You know, we love you as a basketball player. You know, we think you'd be great over here. Um, you know, we, we love your experience, you know, coming from, you know, great, great programs, great culture, um, you know, come here and, you know, help these young guys, you know, along their way. And, um, you know, that's kind of what my role has been, just, you know, helping, helping these young guys, you know, learn what it takes to, to be a professional on and off the court, you know, help them play the right way, you know, be a leader and, um, you know, go out there and play, you know, play basketball. And, uh, you know, it's been fun, you know, and I've been, you know, blessed for this opportunity and, um, and we'll see what happens you know, this come this summer. Do you feel like, or does it make you feel like you've been underutilized in the past? I mean, now you can say, hey, look, you know, I'm getting these minutes and look what I'm doing. Is there a part of you that kind of looks back at your career and, and, and says, you know, look what I could have done if I was given some more opportunity? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, 100%. It's like, you know, as a player, you always think like, oh, I could do more. You know, I could do more. You know, I could do this. I could do that. Um, and you know, a lot of times you don't get the opportunity, so it's it's fun to get that opportunity and to show that you actually can. You know what I mean? That you are able and are willing. Um, you know, there's one thing, um, you know, to to you know be able to do that. You know, earlier in your career, or whatever. Um, you no, know, but it's also you know a testament to be able to you know step into a win team and play a role. You know, a lot of guys can't do that. You know, can't play a role. Um, you know, whether it's off the bench. You know. A shooter, you know, this, that. And, um, you know, I think one thing that I've been able to do is, you know, kind of adapt to different teams, you know, play a role and, and you know, be a piece in the team to help them win. And, um, you know, I think that's, uh, you know, something that, you know, gets lost in translation sometimes. And sometimes guys, you know, are super, super talented in this league, but, you know, they can't, you know, fit a role. They can't play a role and then they kind of get lost in the shuffle and they're out of the league. And I think, um, you know, being able to adapt is, is one thing, but, um, you know, also, you know, coming in and be able to prove that I can't, like, you know, don't forget, I can, I can do, I can do all this as well, you know, and uh, yeah. that, that's been special for me and it's been fun and um, you know, hopefully it's been fun to watch. We only got a couple more here and uh, you're probably going to need your fiance's help here again because you're having a career year in a contract year and you're heading to free agency. Um, what's the most important thing for you about this next contract? Do you just want to cash in? Is it all about the money or is it about going to a contender and, and how are you going to be used? What's most important to you about this next contract? Yeah, I mean, I, I, money definitely plays a role. I mean, you know, <laughs> I think if anybody's given the choice there for more money or less money, um, you know, no matter what the job is, is you know, if you're given a, the choice for, you know, a job in Vernon or a job in Cam for, you know, twice as much as a job in Kamloops, so it's hard to kind of turn that down, right? Um, so money definitely plays a, a role, but I don't think it's the end all be all. Um, you no, know, there's there's different ways to look at it. You can go at, you know, go to a contender um, and you know, try and help them win a title. You can go to you know, a mid-level team and try and, you know, help them build something, um, you know, kind of, you know, help them make a push and, you know, try and make the playoffs and make, you know, something special happen. Um, or you can go to, you know, a, a lower team that's you know maybe younger and you know try and help them build a culture and help them you know kind of create momentum and and build something from the bottom up 
Um, so there's a lot of different things that go into it. Um, and, you know, a lot of it is, you know, the money, but also the opportunity, you know, where are you going to get to play basketball the, you know, the way that, that you want to, where they, they utilize, you know, your skills the best way. And, you know, you get to enjoy yourself day in and day out. Because uh, there's a lot of people in this league who, you know, although you're playing, you know, basketball for a living, you know, waking up and do what you love, um, maybe not in the role you love and you know, it's kind of not enjoyable to go to work every day right so you, you got to factor in all that kind of stuff and then um, also you want to be in a you know a place that your fiance enjoys as well yeah yeah last questions on the olympics massive tournament coming up here in june are you intending to play in that and, and trying to help canada get to the olympics i mean my hope and goal is always to play in the Olympics. Um, you know, ever since I was you know, young, young, watching Steve Nash play, you know, in the Sydney Olympics in 2000 um, in Canada, you know, that's been my goal to you know, get to the Olympics, play in the Olympics. You know, obviously, it's a tough situation right now with the contract year. Yeah. Um, usually, free agency is July 1st. So you would be through free agency onto the Olympics. The Olympics are like end of July, beginning of August, right? So you'd be fine. You know, this year, because it's been pushed back, you know, is Frenacy is August 1st. So it's, it's a tough, um, you know, tough decision because if you get hurt, you know, that's you know, you're, <laughs> good luck getting signed, basically, right? Um, you know, you're going to have to wait a year and then do a kind of short deal to prove you're healthy and, um, you know, all that. So, um, you know, still trying to work through it, you know, hopefully – maybe get some, you know, check into insurance and all that kind of stuff and what we can do to protect ourselves. But, um, you know, my goal and hope is that I can play, but, um, no, we'll see. We'll see how it shakes out.